we were literally a family in the village, but thanks to the sacrifices of our father, Shaykh, he was the game changer for our whole generation. And that was due to his hard, hard work. He never had the, the bus fare to go to his place of studying and work. He used to buy enough kerosene with that money that he had and until that lamp extinguished, he would remain studying. Viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to another episode of Side by Side with myself, your host, Kazi Shafiq Rahman. Many of you guys know Sheikh Ashik from his social media channels. And some people say, why do you do that? And, and you know, what's, what's the purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to show up? Do you not know that there are poor people? And I think to myself, Habibi, you have no idea the level of poverty that we can. He's an incredible reciter with a melodious voice. He is an imam, a graduate of Al Azhar University. I want people to know that this is my Allah's doing. This is where Allah has taken me. Sheikh Ashik, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Thank you for making the time just before your Juma Salah in, in uh, Darul Ummah. Um, we really, really appreciate your time. Um, so it hasn't been, I guess, easy to get hold of you because purely because of your heavily loaded schedule. I'm so happy to be here. Bismillah. I'm so happy to be here, uh, especially with my older brother, uh, Kazi Muhammad Shafiq of Rahman. Um, thank you for having me. And I've been meaning to come from the beginning. It's just a few things managing it. And then Ramadan came. Alhamdulillah. Uh, here now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So I want to begin this episode. Um, obviously, you are known for your amazing a melodious, incredible voice. So inshallah, why don't you give us a treat and our listeners a treat. Inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا حِوَلًا قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا. جزاك الله خيرا. That was that was definitely definitely amazing. I want to begin this show episode by of course expressing my gratitude. Thank you. You're my younger brother, but um, you had. As mentioned in the introduction, you had enormous contributions uh, towards my success and I guess um, the, the success of the entire family as well. Uh, be it um, teaching me how to use a computer for the first time. Um, save as, remember, save as. I can't remember that. Remember wow, that computer that we bought from Hackney Market? It wasn't the, key, the, the single keyboard that... Just well, we just bought screen. the monitor and uh, oh. <laughs> there was no CPU with it. Okay, well, that was one feature. But generally, yeah. I think you're more knowledgeable when it comes to the techie stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't know how to operate the computer. I just knew how to, how to buy the, the hardware. hardware. <laughs> yeah, and then, oh, of course, you introduced me to the self-development, personal development. Oh, yeah. um, Let's not name uh, the company. <laughs> company. But, yeah, yeah. but you, do you know what? I, I, th I think I can talk a bit okay. because the product wasn't bad. And it's yeah. the product that I mainly utilized which is the education of success and it was yourself that introduced yeah. me to it mm -hmm. and of course helping me with my GCSE 
preparations. Oh, I can't remember any of this stuff. Wow. You remember so much, subhanAllah. Yeah. So what I remember is the early days of selling in the market with you. No, no, that was way before. That's, so that's mad. That's Success amazing. University, uh-huh. uh, computer. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, I remember Mylan Madrasha, you know, the, during those days, you know, it was uh, a yeah. you know, the first days of Mazahir al Ulum. It, yeah. it was a bit different, difficult, you could say. So you used to go primary school and I used to go secondary school and then we merged in, 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 in Mazahir and then we kind of yeah. became um, one team. Yeah, yeah one there. team. Until you decided not to go to Kid Minister Madrasa. Yeah, and, and that's where all intentionally all failed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what was it? So, I didn't want to go to the Madrasa, so I intentionally tried to fail, but you, I still passed. Yeah, so, so you were from what I recall, you, we both went to the interview for the boarding Madrasa in Kid Minister, Madina Zulum Kid Minister. And I obviously, I, I wanted to go because I was like trying to, at that age, I was like really on it trying to learn more becoming a better person whatnot and even though i was quite young uh, you on the other hand you sort of wanted to take a bit of a back seat relax a bit and so you intentionally as you told me you, you decided to fail the test but because of dad and obviously dad was like a sheikh alim and everything he had his connections yeah yeah they basically must have been extra kind to you and let you pass but then you decided not to go anyway <laughs> yeah i think at that moment i negotiated with dad and said listen I'm going to pay for my education. He said, okay, like if I, yeah, yeah. if I, you know, go to the local madrasa and he said, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a bit of a negotiator. Even <laughs> I had to negotiate with him towards the end as well. Afterwards, like when I went to, a few years later, I had to go Bolton and I wanted to stay local. I wanted to go to Ibrahim College. So I said, dad, I want to finish my hills with you. Uh, let me finish, recite to you. I said in such a, like a nice way, emotion. I was like, I started my hills with you. <laughs> You're my first teacher. Let me finish it with you. And I will pay for my, uh, I will go to Ibrahim College and, you know, pay my fees and stuff. And he's like, okay. It was a good deal. It was, yeah, it, was, make, it, it was good. He used to make good deals. So, obviously, our I think most memorable experience was, I guess, when we got deported to Bangladesh. By There's so many. Wow, that was one of the big ones. That was one of the major, major ones. What was the? I mean, what was the cause? I mean, I was still, still. At home, going to I guess was it was I going to um, Ibrahim going College? To Ibrahim College that time. Ibrahim College, and then one day something happened, and then we had a call from from your madrasa. It was mad, yeah. It was, it, it was so yeah. Going on from there, I mean, if you take a couple of steps back, I I have my memories with Shajubai. I call him Shajubai. For those who don't know, I call him Kazi uh, Rahman as Shajubai, and that's like a Bangla phrase to say like the brother that's around in the middle of the yeah. sibling order. So Shajibai uh, and, and I, we go back way, 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 like from, from the youngest of my childhood, I can remember. Because we even used to go to, if you could recall, same primary school in Bangladesh, in the village. Yeah, 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 yeah. You used to be reluctant to go to school. I, I used to stand on the middle of the road, not wanting to go to school. And exactly. you'd, you'd be the guy, the annoying guy, like, who's just going to school. It's like, I don't go. go. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to enjoy it. I used to like it. And I, I used to be like sort of uh, quite, I don't know, for some reason, I just found it um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mom still says it until today, like sort of, I used to go to school by my own sort of accord. Yeah, 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 I and remember. They used that. to have to try and, you know, encourage you. Yeah. So that that's like from the earliest of days. I remember also like, and as for those of you, you know that, I'm sure your viewers know that we were both born in Bangladesh. So I, I have other like child memories with yourself, like um, playing with that uh, tricycle that dad bought uh, for me when mom had an operation, I believe. Oh. Oh yeah, it was a two-seater one, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, wow. Yeah, yeah. And the and the guy, one of our neighbours, uncle just did London. And he's done. <laughs> he <laughs> just just Basasa, just, just Basasa. Basasa. If you're watching just Basasa, like you scared. Big shout out to just Basasa. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's in America now, isn't it? Yeah, he used to lift you as well in the whole whole trike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we used to ride the tricycle <laughs> and go towards like the the other buddy, the ne- neighbouring uh, you know house, if you like. And then one of the uncles used to like you know play a bit of. You know, comedy. With he was us. a tall guy. Tall, he was very guy. handsome. You know, and he used to try and like scare us in London. I don't know that that was scary. I think he meant now. like you guys are going to London yeah. soon, and he was kind I'm of. I'm gonna take you away. Something like yeah. that. And we used to get so scared. Those are some of the, uh, my uh, earliest memories, and then I can remember also you were like a very techy guy. Like you used to just try building airplanes <laughs> with the wooden sticks. <laughs> and Dad, until the last of his days, used to remember recall. He say, "No, my son Shafiq is so creative." Uh, uh, ben dalloge, kitalaga ya. Ben dalloge, send the hara or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, so I would like put stuff. Yeah, put it st- together, and you'd have made like a. <coughs> so, Oxfam so much. So back in the day, it was very common for village boys to make something called bearing carts. Yeah. So you get the bearing of a whatever a wheel, and they would get that bearing and stick it onto 
uh, like a wooden shaped cart and that would be their source of like say for example a ride on yeah and someone would push it or someone would pull it with a string yeah. so so should about here made a normal uh bearing cart but he added features to it <laughs> he added wings <laughs> he added a tail he made it look like a plane <laughs> So I suppose you had a thing for airplanes from uh, very early on. I think that's what five, five year old, six probably, year old. Yeah. I was, I was probably about three, four, or five maybe. Wow. So that's that's. I, I have like subhanallah. I was thinking because I know you asked this question, and I was thinking, you know, what are my earliest memories? And I remember these are some of these, and there are others, obviously. Do you remember those things that were we would sit on a, a bark of a, um, you know, the beetle nut tree, tree, you know, oh, cool, 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 cool. Mm, yeah. and they would sit on it, and they would just pull yeah. each other. Like, and sometimes it would go days like, of you know, poverty, village. days of you know uh, village life, poverty. Anything was you'd, you'd have fun with anything. You know, one of the common I don't know if you remember we used to have this common game, especially when we used to go Nana, but it's called Tangol Bengi. Yeah, Tangol Bengi. It was, oh it's nothing. My. Literally, you, you dig a little hole onto the ground and you get a short stick and you place it across that hole and you get another longer stick and you flick it and then touch. And you try. Yeah. It's basically our village uh, uh, version of. So you could say baseball or cricket or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Ajeeb, Allah, ajeeb. It's amazing. And then obviously we migrated in 1997, yeah, yeah. April. I wasn't allowed to go to primary, um, primary school because I was way too old for that. Yeah, yeah. That was, and then oh, you guys went to what? Um, I went to, first I went to Shapla Primary School. Shapla. Oh my God, Shapla. Yeah, yeah, I went to Shapla. Shapla and then uh, Manifield and then... Even when we were coming, <coughs> I remember some of the immigration officers was like, where are you guys, where, where are you taking these kids from? Are you taking them from an... Uh, you know, because we, we're from the village. We're from yeah. the village, and and I say that, and you know, we say that, and we remember and recall that uh, as gratitude to Allah, because it's very important. As Allah in the Quran, "Amma bi ni'mati Rabbika fi hadith," that re- recall and remember and mention the blessings of Allah. How Allah changes uh, a situation, like Allah said also in Surah Duha, "Wala al-akhiratu khayr al-lakum min al-ula," as a promise and a reassurance to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whatever is to, what's to come is better for you than that has already gone past and I I, I, you know, I can relate to those ayat in that way um, so it was a very different we were literally a family in a village but thanks to the sacrifices of our father Sheikh Fadilatul uh, Sheikh Qadi Mawlana Abdul Subhan Rahmatullahi Alayhi Rahmatun Wasi'a Wa Adkhalu Fasiha Jinani Amin Rabbil Alameen He was the game changer for our whole generation and that was due to his hard hard work you know he was a hard working guy man he at 14, his, his dad passes away. Yeah. Our, our dada passes away. And then from there, he's now uh, the caretaker of daddy, as well as his cousin. You know, what's, what's Shabai Shabai and, Shabai and, Tad, and Tazbai, yeah. Tazbai, yeah. So shout out to them as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he became their caretaker and he would have to, he was studying, also maintaining them. He used to make any, he, he used to try and make income. In he, used to even, he used to be a, by the way, he used to be a market trader. Way before, way before we even we started, yeah. existed. Yeah. He used to trade in our local market, different pro- commodities and different products. Um, just to try and one, make that, one that relates to kind of Sunnah Musk, he used to sell uh, agarbatti or, or incense sticks as well. Yeah. So he was a perfume seller or, or fragrance we seller that. We can say back that. in the days. He used, he used <coughs> to sell, initially, like we started also with our Sunnah Musk, we used to sell perfume and honey and black seed and etc. And then obviously he just focused on uh, fragrances only. But... That is also just to because the situation called for it, the, he had to make some sort of income, and he saw, he experienced a life of much much difficulty. And he used to tell us, you recall, I'm sure you do, he used to say that he never afforded a sati, uh, an umbrella, uh, because it was you know he used to use a broken one. Yeah, he never had the um, the, uh, the what do you call it the, um, the the bus fare to go to his place of studying and work. He used to buy enough kerosene with that money that he had and until that lamp extinguished he would remain studying and reading his books. Subhanallah. He never owned his own books. So this is the kind of life of poverty. Dad used to say it and mum was telling me even last night, you didn't come uh, to mum's house yesterday, but mum was telling us last night, apparently when dad passed away in 2012, I think a day or two before he went off to uh, the training, you know, teacher's training that he was using. So he went off to teach uh, train teachers yeah somewhere far away was it, i don't know kumilla or something yeah kumilla kumilla mm-hmm. yeah some other t- uh, district in bangladesh and before that day he actually went on to the microphone and he was like giving a sermon because we have a masjid that he built next to our body and next to our house so in that masjid sermon and and, and that sort of uh, 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 talk that he was giving 
he was recalling his past, where he came from, the nothingness that he came from, and where Allah has taken him with knowledge, with, with honor, with, alhamdulillah, financial stability as well, even at that time for him, considering where he came from. And apparently, our uncles, Shukur Hassan, others, they were saying, why are you mentioning all this stuff? You know, these days are gone. We have new generation. Why are you telling them about your past? Shouldn't it be embarrassed? It's just a bit shy. Should be shy of. He he said no. I want people to know that this is my Allah's doing. This is where Allah has taken me. And so, Subhanallah, he used to recall uh, these difficulties in with with you know in a in a sense of you know fondness in the sense that Allah has made it happen. And he was a man of like. <coughs> really reliance upon Allah and he was the game changer for our whole generation as you know uh, you know he worked so hard he learned he, the deen while everyone else in his village in, in his well he done hifs um, while he was this is later Imam. on by yeah. the way this is like in his he done hifs when he came to the UK you know when he was uh, when he was going to madrasa his fellows colleagues were going to school and they would say to him you know they used to say to daddy uh, our grandmother uh, say, why are you sending your son to a madrasa? Do you want to yeah. make him a, a mullah of a ten taka value? Yeah. As in, like, he's going to have no salary, basically. Yeah. So it's like, well, whatever it is, you know, she, she had yaqeen as well. She was a very strong woman. She lived for a long life as well. She's got, she came from India, from what I know. Yeah, yeah. She was a strong woman, mashallah, tabarakallah. So yeah, dad studied hard. He worked hard. You know, he had a life of so much difficulty. Even when he got married, he had barely anything to provide his mahar. Mom tells us until today that the day that Sheikh Lutf Rahman, our brother Sheikh Khalid Lutf Rahman uh, of Williams Park, the day he was born, uh, she says that in her, in her house there was a leak in the roof. And while she was delivering, there was a leak from the roof coming into the room. This is the level of difficulty that, <coughs> alhamdulillah, bi fadlillah, Allah alhamdulillah. took us from. And uh, you know, I, I'm mentioning this, Sheikh, here in your podcast because I wanted to mention this in our Ilmfid podcast the other day, but I never had time. But I think it's very important for us to recall and remember where we came from. And sometimes, for example, nowadays, mashallah, like I, every now and then, as you know, I make some videos and I try to give a, uh, a positive and a strong image of Muslims. To say, you know, you can indeed combine between being a business person and an imam and do business. You can do imam and business and all of that. Mm. And Sheikh, what do you do for yeah, a living? Yeah, yeah, the, that, that, those, those sort of videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah that <laughs> viral video. Yeah. And some people say, why do you do that? And, and you know... What's, what's the purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to show off? Do you not know that there are poor people? And I think to myself, Habibi, you have no idea the level of poverty that we came from. This is first-hand experience. Yeah. I, I'm not talking about my dad. I've seen the poverty that we came from ourselves. And I'm not doing this now as a way of showing off. Rather, it is to show that Allah can change a situation. Allah can uh, allow for a servant of his uh, to combine between the two. And this is, you know, uh, the whole Ilmfid pod podcast was about that, you know, imams and money and business and uh, Islamic legislation around that and how Sharia uh, in, in guides us with that regard. So, yeah, going back to the point that dad was a game changer, he became an imam in the Silet uh, Bandar Bazar Jamia Masjid, which is one of the key mosques in the Silet town. And from, from there, he was shortlisted and, and you know, headhunted, if you like, yeah. and, and handpicked by Enfield Mosque uh, to be their imam because in him they saw strength in him they saw commitment discipline dedication knowledge fearlessness dad was a brave man and i don't know, I, I don't know if you remember the last few advice that he gave us when he was going to bangladesh in that very journey that he passed away he told us don't be cats be lions yeah don't be cats uh, yeah. you know don't be a cat be a lion be a tiger have courage be bold be brave but at the same time be fearful of allah yeah. know where to lower your head don't lower your head to anyone besides Allah the one and only Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, amazing, amazing person. So then he came to the UK and mashallah, slowly with the difficulty, with the minimal income, he was able to support my, our mother and then slowly, slowly the situation changed. So then eventually we did, as you've mentioned, come to the UK. And even that, that was very hesitant for the very, for the simple fact that he thought that are we going to be able to maintain our Islam, our identity as Muslims? If we come to the country, to, to the UK, because of course it's a non-Muslim country and the culture is not Islamic, and the fitna is, as we know, is even more now than ever before, with all of the isms and ideologies directly pointed towards uh, Muslimness and being a Muslim and the family unit. So he he he, you know, kind of forecasted or kind of had a, saw the trajectory as where to as to where this is going, and he 
he was hesitant he, for to what, from 1982 to 1987 15 years he decided not to bring us here and 15 years he'd be going back and forth missing his family missing his wife missing his children uh, and he'd come to the village every now and then you know to visit us and i can remember one of, my, one of the earlier memories is that one day dad was lying down resting uh, in the uh, fotik or the sitting area or one of the rooms and i was lying i was resting my head on his belly with my ear you know how sometimes you lie down on someone's belly like that and uh, I was, I was remember, uh, and then I was doing that, and then I, be, I decided to be cheeky. So I was quite <laughs> cheeky, as you know, like, and I, I got my mouth, and I, I kind of blew into his belly, and then like, I made that sound, but that annoyed him. So he started shouting, like, "Oh, what are you doing? Go away from, <laughs> from zero to a hundred, like, he was all happy resting, and then he's like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, amazing, <laughs> amazing, yeah. So, so that, that it's, it's a long story." I don't know if you have time L- for Long that. story, yes. Um, and then we came to the UK and then the story in the lift in Dhaka as we were leaving the hotel yeah. on our way to the airport uh, to board the flight. Yeah. Um, and there was those high-heeled, you know, well-dressed ladies in the lift with us. And they said, I can't remember that. So um, <laughs> they said, um, which orphanage are you taking them to? Mm-hmm. And that obviously he straight away knew like the vibe of the of the comment and he decided to instead speak in english as opposed to oh, bangla okay. he said lesson. well they're going to london oh and they they, they just show yeah, up that, that had this you know he had this he had style man he had <laughs> he had strength you know he had oomph to him he had boldness <laughs> yeah and he used to speak he learned english while being a mess up as you know a sheikh you know it wasn't common for a islamically trained person to know english and to be but he actually done his metric as well which is i believe gcs yeah but he's he def- definitely could speak English, and he was quite proud of that in the sense because it's it's a, it's a foreign language, and apparently he used to practice speaking English even in his student days because he for some reason thought and knew in his heart that one day he'd be in London. He manifested it. And yeah, it he kind of in his, he had this high aspiration and hope. Yeah, and, and this is one of the things about that as well. So he he had a level of yaqeen and faith in Allah. He used to say that when you make dua to Allah, don't just ask. You know, keep on asking until Allah gives it. Demand it from him in a polite way. And as a servant, demand it from him. So he had this amazing level of yaqeen and, and, and firm conviction that Allah will take care of me. And Allah will give me. And Allah is with me. And that's why he went from stage to stage and level to level. Subhanallah. All, all and we have it. to have that, by the way. As Muslims, we're supposed to have that level of yaqeen. Because... Uh, the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, "Udu Allah wa antum muqinun bil ijaba." Make dua to Allah, and you are sure that Allah will answer you. Have firm belief that Allah is listening, and He will answer it. Maybe not right now, maybe later, maybe in Jannah, but Allah will answer you. No, definitely, and I think I've listened to one of the Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's talk as well, and he was really, really kind of going in on the idea of you know when you're making prayer, do it in such a way as if. Allah will mm-hmm. will will indeed yeah listen and will have to listen in in, yeah. in, in, the, in that sense. Amazing. So going back to I suppose I want to discuss the story of of, of Bangladesh, how we ended up in in Bangladesh, oh. um, and I guess it was me and you together. Yeah, and Subhanallah, it's long story, <laughs> man. But I, it's a funny one as it's, well. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's funny and scary and a lot of emotions. I think we need to make a drama out of it. You know, yeah, sort of a documentary. So we're there in Dhaka, we're coming to the UK. Long story short, you know, we're going primary school, we're trying to settle down. We experience a lot of difficulty, whether it be in terms of, you know, uh, um, language shaming, you know, Farishi, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Alhamdulillah. Did you get that as well? I thought you, um, you I, wouldn't, I, because, because you went to primary school and you were kind of well... To be honest, not, not as much, <coughs> but then... I can remember in some of the madrasas later on, you know, they, they attach that. These to guys automatic. are dangerous, man. The madrasa kids are like... All the, all the guys from those madrasas watching, big shout out to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to pretend like, yeah, I'm a normal guy, you know. <laughs> and then within first few hours, I, I got uh, yeah, clocked. Yeah, yeah, they clocked, yeah. But it's, it's okay, man. You know, I think it's those experiences, even though they weren't positive, the negativity, because we're able to um, sustain them, it made you stronger. In yeah, your mind. absolutely. It made you stronger. It made you more immune to negative comments and... You know, it's all a part of life. Even right now, like everyone has this negativity of mocking and, yeah. having, and making a laugh out of someone, especially when it's something that you're not familiar with. So no hard feelings, but it is what it is. Uh, there was that level of, uh, <clears throat> there was that sense of um, negativity or even bullying sometimes, especially as we move to uh, more sort of 
you could say, racist areas in London, you know, where they were not so used to seeing Muslims. I can remember in one story, you, someone ran off with your hat. And oh, my God, yeah. Dad was adamant that we maintained the Islamic libas. Yeah. Even when we were We moved to Poplar at that time. That was 1999, we're talking about. Yeah, early, yeah, early, yeah, 1999, just before 2000. In 2000, uh, those years, like, certain parts of Poplar was, like, uncharted areas for Muslims. Yeah. Like, the Tevye estate was a, a Vanderpool primary school, was yeah. a predominantly uh, non-Asian, you can say. Yeah. It was a very, very white area. And in my school, in Manifold, of course, I went to Shapla, then I went to Manifold Primary School. I was, we were the few Asians there. And I was definitely the only Muslim boy that used to wear a hat. And dad was adamant that we <laughs> hold high our identity and be proud of being a Muslim. And he says, look, the Jewish, Jewish kids are proud of being a Jews and they wear their hat. And the Sikh kids are proud of being Sikh and they wear their turban. So why shouldn't you be proud of being a Muslim and wear your hat, you know? So you used to be very adamant. And that's why even when you're coming from Bangladesh, in the airport, wearing hats. And in school, I used, to wear, I used to be the only boy that used to wear a hat in our school. My si our sister Rashida, Sheikha Rashida, she used to be the first girl in our school to wear a scarf. And so oh, no, that was that, immense that was, in, in the courage. Yeah, it's a huge. And yourself, you know, you once you're wearing a hat and going to a popular market with dad and then you had these, uh, these naughty kids, they run off with your hat and then they, <laughs> they uh, effectively urinated, urinated on, far away. Oh how did God. they do it while they were running away? Like, how did they even have the time to, you know, <laughs> kids are, <laughs> kids are straight. <laughs> do you remember that time me and you went to uh, Poplar Market and we were coming back with our bike and then oh we got God. stopped. Were you there? Yeah, you and were on the back and I was riding. Golden Wonders. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We I, got hijacked. To that guy who, who, who nicked our Golden Wonders, I want it back. <laughs> It, it took us a lot of sacrifice and because I think that day the, the, the shop, the Dave shop probably was closed and uh, there was another shop next to the Langdon Park school. I think for some reason we decided to go past that, <coughs> go behind that. Yeah, we went to a Christian market and then we would, I think mum sent us to, to get something as well. And then we got stopped and searched yeah. and these kids... That, the Golden Wonders is an expensive crisp back then, man, because he wasn't your space raiders. It, was, <laughs> it, was Wonders, it must have been about 50 people, which is a lot of money back then. And uh, there we are holding on our hand, hoping to enjoy it back, uh, back in the house. And these uh, uh, naughty kids, bullies, they, they decided to snatch it off us. Yeah, yeah. the mental trauma, I guess. Well, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I'm glad that we were not affected in yeah. a, in a, in a long term. Because I think kids <coughs> nowadays, if they were to experience this kind of difficulty, they would definitely have some sort yeah, of... Yeah, you know, have, a, have a long term impact. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys. If you have been enjoying this episode so far today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're only 345 subscribers away from our first thousand subscribers. So please, let's get to that thousand subscribers today. So before we move on, um, I know in school you had a little uh, bit of a movement going on, oh, an Islamic <laughs> movement. <laughs> and your <laughs> members no. were not just Muslims. <laughs> So it was actually amazing. So in, in Manifield, right? So Shapla wasn't much of a memory for me. Shapla was just, um, I can remember they used to help me a lot. They were very helpful learning English and they used to make me read to the class and they were very kind and gentle. So I was put into year one, even though I'd already done year one in, in Bangladesh. Then I skipped year two somehow in the transition between Mani uh, Shapla and Manifield. Manifield is in Poplar. And I went straight into class not, uh, year three. And uh, my teacher was Mr. Woolard. I don't know if he's what. Oh, I remember Mr. Woolard. Mr. Woolard. Like, I've heard that name so Mr. many Woolard. times. But I used to think his name was Mr. Wool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's Woolard? It must be Wool. <laughs> so Mr. Woolard was very kind. He actually partnered me with a good friend of mine, my dear brother, Abdul Hay. And he said, oh, uh, Abdul Hay, uh, can you please look after this man? And he basically, Abdul Hay was very kind. He used to help me extra, you know, extra help, guide me, teach me things I didn't know. The karate Offy, kid. Karate kid, yeah. He, and he obviously now, he, then he's a black belt karate as well now. He got married recently. May Allah bless him and his family. Um, he's one of my top friends, man. Early as childhood Yeah, he's friend. such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Until now, you know, he's, he's just an amazing gem, man. His whole family, they're all so kind. His mom was also, mashallah, very educated. She, Bangla teacher. The whole family, amazing family. So <coughs> Abdul Hay and me, Manafield. So now, as you know, I was wearing a hat. And this was... Uh, this was not welcome by the, what's this wise guy wearing a hat so you experience a bit of bullying and etc abdul hay was a strong kid he used to defend me yeah and then there was one uh, brother of ours uh, is a, a brother called larry 
he was, he was a he's a young man. He's a Afri- he's from Africa. I think originally, of course, uh, he, was, he was a black young man, and he was a Muslim, and he actually comes from Muslim heritage, but he doesn't know anything about Islam. So he said to me, and he was one of the top football players. And as you know, you know, status is given based on the level of football yeah. in school. school yeah. If you're a go- if you're a good football player, you have a level of respect, a different level of respect. So Larry said, oh, I don't know, can you teach me about Islam? Uh, I don't know about it. So I told him the Shahada. Like, like <laughs> at that young age, I'm in year three. <laughs> I'm teaching him Layla Hell. And then he goes, Oh, we should make an Islam group. <laughs> <laughs> the Islam, so we made an Islam group. So ask Muslims. Sounds like Malcolm X, <laughs> <laughs> We made the Islam group. And Larry, <coughs> me, Abdul Hay, my another friend, good friend, Kashim, um, Badru, Khalid, PC Khalid, big shout out PC to PC Khalid. Khalid. <laughs> uh, you know, we were like in this group. Khalid is our neighbor as well uh, afterwards. Uh, so we used to like hang around uh, a few of us like that, and we like had a good five six people. And there was like on one occasion there was one of these naughty kids. I'm not gonna name him, and I hope put it in case he you know gets in trouble. Uh, but there was a naughty kid, and he was like being quite harsh. He was trying to bully me. So then um, uh, uh, Larry came to my defense and he said, "Oi, leave leave I shook alone." Because <laughs> <laughs> they can't say I I shook. <laughs> or a sheik. Uh, Off used to call me Abdul used to call me a sheik, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> others used to call me other things like you know different pronunciations. But uh, the non-Muslim said I shook, and I remember one, uh, one of my <laughs> classmates, this you know, uh, one of the one of the girls. She was like a big girl. Uh, I can't remember her name, but one day she came and she shook me. I don't know why I'm saying this. <laughs> she shook me. She started. He goes, I shook the baby. I <laughs> 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 say that is man. <laughs> Cause like I shake, I shook the baby. Yes, yeah, he's shaking me. Yeah, and then three. dad went to dad went to Umrah once, and he got a hat for me. And he used to be, you know, them hats that have little, little mirrors on it, <laughs> like a black and red and blue kind of. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. So he got me one of those hats, and I used to wear a hat every time, every time. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, I'm still wearing a hat. Um, he's, I, in the, and I used to wear different hats, and I used to be known as a, the kid with lots of different hats. <laughs> so this has now mirrors. So now you have all these kids coming to me. <laughs> Let me see myself in the mirror, in your, in your little mirror, in your hat. <laughs> but anyway, the Islam group was useful. So one, uh, this, this one kid was trying to be harsh once, and then the Islam group came and said, you know, us lot basically, like, oh, leave him alone. And then it was actually a quite bad situation where I think one of, the, one of my colleagues, one of my people in our group, he's, he chucked a chair at him just to in oh my, my God. But it was, it was amazing. <coughs> so like Growing up in that difficult circumstance definitely shaped our our personalities and our resilience and our willingness to carry on and our ability to take criticism and negativity and just rub it off your shoulder. Uh, as in, I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying, I'm saying just rub it off your shoulder and just carry on. I'm not saying you got something on there. But yeah, this is, this is what it is. Alhamdulillah, uh, things change. And then, and then of course, so I don't know, I'm like, it's like I'm talking one way today, but yeah. I'll no, no, it's talk. fine. That's, that's, that's what this yeah. show is about. It's not about me. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so then that finished. And we started doing karate as well at one point in that yeah. in that time. Dad and knew at that moment we, we would need yeah. some self defense. So he sent us all to karate wholesale, from the eldest to the youngest. And then uh, what's that guy's name? Darren, uh, Darren and Michael, Michael, Bengali Michael, Bengali Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why his name was Michael, <laughs> but yeah, Darren and Michael. They were like uh, Darren was the main coach, and he used to teach us. Yeah, where is this guy? I want I want to go and find amazing. him. You know, apparently Abdul Hay still knows him. No way. We need to Apparently go and see he went to competitions with him. So we used to do this. Let me show you. Hold on. This is the... K- <laughs> <laughs> this is the karate group. E- H. N- e- son. <laughs> like this. And then, yeah, that's it. You have to do it. I don't know. How, how realistic is this punch? <coughs> hey, guy, I'm coming. I want to punch you. <laughs> and then you have to walk like that. Oh, my God. Uh, but and the defense was good, though. Like this. Oh, yeah. It looks quite good where you, yeah. you position yourself. And then the f- leg work, the footwork was also very interesting. Kai Kushan, Kai something, karate. It was, yeah. it was fun. Yeah, yeah. So we, I think we went up to yellow belt or something. It's, it's, we'd made a bit of progress. You know, passing on to yellow belt, I remember the experience. I was doing Khatme Yunus the whole. Khatme Yunus, the Dua Sayyidina Yunus, when he was in a difficulty and he wanted Allah to rescue him from that difficulty. So yeah. So all of that happened. <coughs> uh, primary school finished. And then we're, I went to, as we said afterwards, when I finished year six, you know, uh, and you know, the weirdest thing is, yeah, in our end of year picture, uh, in year six, and one of the really, really kind teachers that became my teacher from year six, in year six was uh, a woman called Miss Ghana. She was so kind to me. 
And she used to always like, she, she, she used to be so like kind and caring and look after. She even trusted me so much. She made me in charge of the stationery room. Subhanallah. Yeah, she was like, uh, she was really nice. Woman. Was Miss Ghana English or? She or was English, yeah. Okay. She was, uh, she's in the picture. I, end of year, if I had it, I would have showed it to you. Um, let me see if I can find that while I'm talking. So what happened is in that uh, end of year picture, I never had any, they told me to wear a different clothing, right? But I never had any casual English clothing, if you like. And the only piece of clothing that I had, which was not like a Punjabi, as in an Islamic outfit, attire, <laughs> Was my karate kick. <laughs> yeah, so I, I went to school. Photo. I went to school. Like, oh my god! Looking back, I'm laughing, laughing at myself now. Well, yeah, so I went. I went to school. Honestly, I <laughs> I went to school wearing my karate kick. And so in my end of year six, year six graduation picture of of our classes, in that one picture, um, there is me wearing a karate kick. And, uh, I was and a hat and a hat as well. It's yes. a, Somal- a Somalian hat at that time. Wasn't I, I think it? it was a Omani hat. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Omani, I don't know how I got hold of the Omani hat. I don't think I'll be able to find it. I don't know where I placed that picture. Yeah, send it, send it to us, and then we'll 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 add oh, it on the screen. Probably add it into your yeah. into your screenshot or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah, brilliant. Um, that finish, and then Dad combined both of us. Because so it was Khalid, the, our neighbor. Because there was a discussion: should we now? What should we do? Should we go to London Park School, secondary school, or should we then go now to uh, Madrasa? And then there was a new Madrasa opening up. Under the supervision of Sheikh Imdad Rahman Al Madani, Hafizahullah Ra, who just came back from Medina, he opened a secondary school in known as Mazahir Al Ulum in Myland. And so, big shout out to all the Mazahir Al Ulum uh, teachers, ustads, and students. And yeah, we started there as you you were downgraded from year eight because you were stepping. So I school. went all the way up to year nine, year ten, almost year ten. You know where, where you select what subject you're going to study in, in secondary school. So I wanted to go for design and technology because I enjoyed all the. Or maybe that was the system back then. Yeah. And then uh, dad asked me like, you know, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to, what do you want to do? Madrasa or 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 design and technology? I said design and technology because you're, you're going to madrasa still <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He asks you and then he disagrees. <laughs> yeah. That's his own thing. I think that was one of his kind of um, uh, technique to kind of get you to be It's an important obedient. leadership skill. <coughs> it's an important leadership skill, which is that you must, you are required according to Islam. Allah says in the Quran, fil amr. You should take mashwara. But as a leader, you should make the wisest decisions. It's not always the case that the suggestions are the wisest. You yeah. should know better as the wiser, the older, or more knowledgeable. And so that's what you used to do. You yeah. say, okay, that's what you want. Thank you for your suggestion. But I think this is better for you. Yeah. But he had his own way of doing and that's it. What, and then I went all the way back to year seven, which was good because I actually then understood a lot of the stuff in the classroom. Because from year seven to year nine, I was just missing a lot of classes to go to the English class yeah. with the one-to-one teacher, Mr. Islam, who would literally turn up at the door if I missed a class Mr. one day. Islam. Mr. Islam. From Stepney School. Stepney Green School. And he was... he So he was... Um, he would teach me English with a combination of Bangla, so he would explain to me in Bangla. And oh, then wow. so he's doing the translation as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and that's where I learned my the A B C D song, you know. Just remember it. Yeah, yeah. yeah sing it. <laughs> A B C D E. <laughs> oh, Kazi man. Kazi Rahman, the boss yes, of seven. many, many things, you know, is singing A B C D song <laughs> for you guys. Oh, wow. Um, doesn't get better. Now, uh, let's fast track to 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 that story. Uh, to yeah. that so story let, let because I think story. this is this is so interesting. This is, yeah, because we've got limited time as well. It's I think the while. story on the I guess while in Bangladesh is where the story really develops. Yeah. So primary school finishes. We go to Bali Madrasa. Two and a half years into it, there's a bit of a I think issue in the Madrasa. So dad decides that you know we need to make a change. So I decide to go to Kirminista Madrasa boarding school. He wanted to get, take me there with you as well, and he then decided not to. What did you do? So, because I didn't want to... I don't know what you did at that time. So, my logic at that time was, how do I exit the... the Get into work life? I, I just wanted to get to work. Make money. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, my first one was undo the Hafizi kind of... So, he, I was doing his. So, I said to dad, look, can I do just Alimi? Because I think I'll be better You're at Alimi. You're a partial Hafiz, right? Uh, you yeah, remember Seven Sanders. Power. I think I remember Seven Power. And then uh, I explained to dad and then he accepted it, accept, accepted my proposal and then he put me in Alimi. And then the next step was from Alimi to the next one down. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> he basically gradually, yeah, yeah, gradually yeah. resigned <clears throat> from the... And then obviously education. I was taken with um, yourself, Khalid and, and myself and dad and Khalid's dad to Kiriminsa Madrasa to literally 
yeah. admit us into the madrasa and then and Khalid and I we stayed yeah uh, and uh, Khalid was my roommate yeah uh, so big shout out to Khalid and all of the H block uh, brothers uh, from Madina to the Ulum al-Islami Academy Minister H block roommate room 12 come on we ran that <laughs> we ran that passage we used to have uh, my room was a tea room by the way I used to make tea for everyone and people used to love it so we spent another two and a half years in uh, Kid Minister, a GCSE time. So GCSE time came and I started growing a beard. So in uh, according to the rules and regulations of the madrasa, you are not allowed to shave your beard because it's from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu to keep the beard. So and they are, you know, they they're doing tarbiyah, they're training you. So mm. they they basically almost made sure that this is a rule that you can't shake or shave your beard. I shaped it up. I made it into a thin shape. Yeah, I remember that shape. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> now it's a bit thicker now. So because of that, I got suspended. They said, and maybe I think I had other things on my record as well. So I got. They said you can't. You're going home. You can't take your GCC exam. Wow. So this was quite. Actually, it was very harsh. Drastic. To, you know, in hindsight, that was very harsh, uh, because GCC is important exam. Uh, but then eventually they had mercy. Dad was, you know, said, you know, apologize on my behalf. But he was. Furious, he's like, How while I was enjoying my uh, easy oh, life at home, <laughs> yeah, you were having the best time of life. You had a moped, yeah, you used to do all sorts. You had like, I, I saw you one of your friends the other day, Nazmul Bai, yeah, and he was telling me about how you guys used to, cause yeah, we used to go around and yeah, it was fun. cause a bit of trouble with yeah. your mopeds and your motorbikes, yeah. But me on the other hand, other hand, I was in the boarding school and I was going through a quite a difficult time because of all of that, so they allowed me to go back and do my GCSE. <coughs> And then after GCSE, summer holidays, I had the same problem again. I shaped it again. They said, you're halas, you're gone, finished, goodbye. So I got basically kicked out of school because of shaping up my beard. So a lot, a lot, a lot of people know this about, you know, I got kicked out of my beard. <laughs> yeah. But so it did, it happened. And that's when our, our basically pathways met again. It met yeah. once yeah. in year seven, year seven, and now it met again in, you know, in the college years. Because you were also causing a bit of trouble. Yeah, at home. Your, at home with your... And basically the blame came to me because of me, you ended up doing... Because I, w- I used to shape up my beard probably, as well. And, and, and it was you very... <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> probably true. You so, know? yeah, I, I got the heat. And yeah. he, he said, pair of you. Yeah, going. <laughs> we're we're going to eradic- eradicate you lot. And we're going to send you to you Bangladesh. You deserve to be here. So he basically made a plan with a madrasa. Very well thought plan, very, you know. Very, you know clever he made a plan with a friend of his called Sheikh Salman I believe right yeah Sheikh Salman of a madrasa called Darul Rashad in uh, Mirpur Sharegaro in Mirpur yeah. in Dhaka Pullabi, Mirpur, Pullabi, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so he basically made a plan with him and said I'm going to send my kids to you uh, for the Ramadan course they have a Ramadan like Quran course but the plan was that we should stay for longer so, so he didn't tell us he anything at that point. It was, was just us going for a temporary period yeah. and, you know, just 15 to days or a month of Ramadan, Quran course, and uh, supposedly our room was going to be 10 10. You know, the best room, AC is going to be beautiful. Yeah. It's gonna, we're going to be living in four seasons or something yeah. or Hilton. <coughs> That's what we thought. <laughs> <laughs> Little did we know. So dad said, You guys, you have to go to Bangladesh and you have no choice because you're being naughty, you're not behaving yourself yourself. Off you go. And he even got his crew ready here in this country so his friends who also knew us and we would kind of look up to those people like Sheikh Saleh and you know Saleh Bai Saleh, uh, and, and he, he brought Saleh. them over to our house to convince us yeah. that it's a good idea that I, we I don't think go. even they knew what, what dad's ultimate plan yeah, was yeah no nobody knew so <coughs> so as we know guys you know it's not nothing to hide we have originally a green passport and then we have a British passport Obviously, you can't use the green passport And we're anymore. in the transition phase transition at that time. Of, I mean, we had both at that time for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and now we'll just have the red one. It's probably going to be black soon. <laughs> <laughs> for those who might ask, do you still have a green passport? No, I don't. Uh, so dad sent us to Bangladesh with one-way tickets and a Bangladeshi passport. We should have clocked. We didn't. We didn't. We, we didn't. Clocked, but he, he, he was he was like, um, you might need to come back. He didn't really explain it. He said, one way ticket and Bangladeshi passport. Because we'll get single. you back when, 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 when you guys are kind of uh, done and everything. And to be honest, <coughs> because we're like in the, on, on the wrong side, as in we were criminals in that yeah. regard. You know, we, we never had the rights to ask too many yeah, questions. Yeah. It's a one way ticket. Off you go, mate. So he sent us to Bangladesh. Uh, and we were received on the other end by one of our cousin brothers. Sheikh Mukhtadir, 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 Mukhtadir yeah. Yeah, 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 the younger brother of Sheikh Mufti uh, Abdul Muntaqib, Hafizahullah, and Allah Shifa. So he received us in Dhaka and he was actually quite kind to us. Yeah. I, remember. I remember it was such a hot day. Man. It was a hot day and a guy was having tea. 
<laughs> yeah, that police and that made us feel more hot. He's walking across the, you know, the part that people come to collect, pick yeah, you up yeah, on the yeah. Dhaka airport. And it's boiling, fuming. People are like in the cages waiting for the, uh, looking in. The people are like, he's like, behind the cage waiting for <laughs> It was like 12 o'clock, the sun is straight. It's midday. And my guy is walking, barely walking in the heat, but he's carrying a cup of tea and you can see the fumes <laughs> coming out of that tea. That Do you remember that police officer where we, we couldn't speak Bangla and he goes, Bangladeshi sele, Bangla kota bolta parina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was kind of cussing us. Yeah, he's like, you Bengali, but you can't speak Bengali. As in should though. Yeah. <clears throat> so then we are taken to the madrasa. And straight to madrasa. Straight there's no, no in between, no, no cousin's right. house here, there, you know. We're in Dhaka, from Dhaka airport to Mirpur where the madrasa is, straight there, bags. And then we'll meet, go to the principal's office and the principal is there to receive us. Man. And, and he says, oh, welcome. Welcome, Amazing. welcome. This, and before we can see our room, he's like, you know, he says, yeah, give me your passport. It's and dad says, what? To s for safeguard your yeah, passport, yeah, you know, you need to give it in the locker box. Because if your passport gets <coughs> nicked in Dhaka, you're, you're done for. You're yeah. not coming back ever, yeah. so give it to him. It's very clever. So we gave our passports to him. And um, and that was the last time we saw it until the whole <laughs> until the whole tragic <laughs> yeah. incident that unfolded thereafter. We gave it, and then now we are taken. This is before Ramadan. I think about ten days before Ramadan. Yeah. <clears throat> Fifteen days before Ramadan, and we're taken to our room, and yeah, Allah, we see a room, bro. The wall was like half black yeah. with mold. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't our room. It was another. There was another gentleman there as well from London. Yeah. We had an ensuite toilet, but God forbid that shouldn't have been there because they <laughs> was actually bringing all the stench. <laughs> yeah. And outside the window, there was like a running drain. Drain. Oh. And there was mosquito God. and everything oh coming God. in. It was nasty. It was no AC, no whatsoever. It was just and there window. was a massive fan blowing us hot air. <laughs> hot. It was actually making it worse. Oh my goodness gracious me. We sat there and we're thinking, what on earth is this? The other guy, the brother, I can't remember his name. Shohidul. 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 like, He was our only savior at that time. He was like, listen, it's fine, man. We'll go out. We'll go out later on. We'll go to the arcade. We'll go to the arcade. Oh my God. He was, he was actually enjoying himself there. He was like, yeah, we'll go. So he's trying to come for us. But we tried it for like three, four days. He wasn't working. Even the principal was even trying to be kind to us. He said, let's take them to the zoo. We go to the zoo, that Dhaka Zoo, so it was pretty good. Bro, all the animals are looking like they're dying too. <laughs> Just like we're <laughs> they dying. They needed feeding. The tigers yeah. needed feeding. They look hungry and thirsty. They're about to die of malnourishment. But that was <coughs> our experience in the zoo. We came back. It, it just working. annoyed us even further. I said, what are work. you doing? It wasn't working for us. It wasn't working for us. So we pleaded. And you got on the phone. And you were the... I was the rebel. You were the hero of that whole journey. Because, because we basically got out of it eventually because of you. So you made, I think, calls to mum and said, I'm not, I can't do this. Yeah, I started um, lobbying, lobbying mum. <laughs> yeah, mum was the, you know, mum was the minister that's, that was on our side, you know. Yeah, dad's always. not here, so I think we can talk about it because if dad was here, mum would Wallahi, yeah, mom get the heat. Well, mom went, went, and mum's always, mothers are always softer <coughs> and they, like, they have more love. And dad was strict, so he was, we had our fair share of strictness from, enough yeah. strictness from dad. And then the comfort for like, yeah. you know, she needs to have sympathy and empathy. So you got on the phone and you said, um, we can't do this. We can't. And dad was like, what did you say to me? You're not going to stay. You were basically getting You're blasted. You're finished, mate. You're getting blasted. <laughs> like, wait until I come. I sort you out. And he Please. was about to come well, about 20 or 25 days later. So yeah, he was going to come. He was we gonna needed come anyway. to escape. Like if we were going to escape, it had to happen before he came. He, he decided he was going to come after Ramadan anyway. Yeah. For Eid. So we're thinking, what's going on? He's like, wait until I come. Well, I'm going to sort you out. And then somehow, mom must have mediated and convinced him, listen, Ramadan course is not until Ramadan. Yeah. So let them go to the village yeah. and meet stay with some <coughs> of their you know, village cousins and they'll come back. So we spent about three or four days, I believe, in Dhaka. Do you remember we us pay, giving so much donations to those like poor people outside yeah, the that's, mosque? That's later. You that's know, going later. to the mosque. It gets worse because we it turns out we had a bigger wor bigger problem to worry about. So we go to Sile, to our village, and we are now like living in our house. But problem is we don't have money. So we're having to live in the village with village food. Remember, we couldn't even afford to buy a chicken to get it cooked. My God. We, uh, Fufu donated yeah. one of her chickens to us very <laughs> generously. And we had that chicken curry. And it was because dad was like, you shouldn't be here. So he was being strict with us. He was strict, man. He was a tough guy. Allah Akbar. Allah have mercy on him. So <coughs> then... What happened? We're supposed to go back in it. So did we go back? Did, did we no, had we, to go we back? Bunked, didn't we? we bunked the first few days, and Dad was like, 
Wow, well, enough! What are you doing? You're supposed to be in Dhaka. What are you doing in the village? Get back immediately. So we went back to the place yeah. in Ramadan, in the, one of the middle days of Ramadan, My like God. about first few days of Ramadan, and we we'll go back now. And supposedly this is the Qari and Akwas, like the, you yeah, know, the, the, the teacher yeah. and stuff like that. And we we'll go back to that same old gloomy, doomy room, and oh, we're miserable, we're hot, we're starving, we're hungry, sticky. Lo and oh. behold, iftar time. My brother's over there in Dhaka. All respect to them. They have for for iftar. They have. Muri. Muri. Dry rice, puff rice with khola. Yeah. And as silly as we don't have that. Yeah. We need kisuri, we need dalibora, we need sana. We have our own <coughs> way of iftar, you know, we have our own thing going on. But they have a different way of doing iftar and yeah. they love it. But it wasn't working for us. We're like, no, this is intolerable. We can't do this. Did we even attend any of the classes though? The, the I don't think so. I don't know. We, we I don't always we find a way to kind of just avoid and avoid. We were so and depressed and so worried and so sad and so sick in our rooms that we didn't even... I don't know if you actually made it. Maybe we should made a show in one of the classes. I think the teachers were kind of got the gist, like l- just let them be, man. Yeah, just, let, yeah. just let them adjust to the yeah to the place, and we will take it from there. But it was it was bad. So then we got back on the phone, mum, uh, pleading to mum, please get us out of here. I spoke to dad once again. I said, look, I saw snake in the toilet, and I saw he was we like, did see. what? We did saw some. We saw something, right? Yeah, it was. I think we saw some crazy stuff. In the <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, you don't want to see. What we saw, it was a bad experience, man. Do you know, every time I had a shower, I remember that big tank on the, you know, that round tank. And I used to just imagine what's in that tank. And, the and that used to scare the hell out of me. And the mosquitoes. Oh, well. The mosquitoes of Dhaka, they have, they're, they're on, they're on they steroids. They are like strained and they but, are like, they've strong. got muscle. They, they destroy anyone, man. If you ever go to Dhaka, be, be careful of the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes in Dhaka are serious. Um, eventually, uh, we tell mom that we can't do it. And so... She now steps in. Yeah, she steps in as, with her as, plan. As, as the you know the interior minister, the home minister, she says, you know what, this is not going to work and dad's not going to listen. So she basically pleads to the madrasa principal and says, please be kind to my children. I'm going to send one of my brothers to collect them. And, you know, they can't do it. She feels sorry for us. You know, we're still <coughs> young, we're still kids. No, I think the story was, so this principal told dad, like, these guys, these, are, these guys are not staying. I don't know what to well, do. They can't do it, yeah. Yeah, they can't do it. And then I think simultaneously, mom was also kind of, you know, speaking to the principal. And, and the plan was, principals, after speaking to, to mom, he said, look, we'll give you the passport only if your mom and your brother speaks to us. Okay. And that was a plan. And that okay. was a condition. And we had to get now brother on the phone and mom on the phone. And, and that and was a mission. Mom did, you know, show up. <coughs> you know, she did actually call. Yeah. And come to our, uh, come to our uh, you know, to save us. Uh, and so I think one of our, our mamas now. Yeah. Uh, Abdul Qahir mama. And then he changed. <laughs> the principal changed his mind because he told dad that this was all like, you know, he's going to give us a passport. And dad made sure that do not give them the passport because dad knew that we would end up oh, going so yeah, to Dad Bari. heard <coughs> basically what the plan was and he basically reasserted saying, make sure the passports, they don't get it. So then we have to now go, because we can't hack it, Abdul Qahir mama, my God, this guy, man, honestly. Mama, he's a legend, man. <laughs> he came. He was there from that day. So the, we're, the hostage is getting transferred from Muqtadir Bai. <laughs> so to, because Abdul Qahir Mama is like mom's own brother, yeah, right? Mom's, and, mom's army. And he came to us to, to, our, to our <coughs> salvation or to save us, you know. And he, he collected us and he took us to his silet uh, dormitory. Mess. mess. I don't know what they call it, mess. But he had a, like an apartment that they used to stay in uh, while he was studying. Yeah, I remember he had college. a computer and, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we went, we resorted to there and we had to spend. At, so the principal didn't give us the passport. Yeah. The condition was he will, mama will take the passport and he keeps it under his custody. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. mama is also dad's man over uh-huh, there in, in uh-huh. Bangladesh because he used to control all the finances. Uh-huh. So he was a kind of um, a, a trusted aide for both mom and dad. Uh-huh, yes. So that's why you <coughs> he had to go back now, Dakha, on yeah. his by himself. Yeah. To collect the passports. And yeah. you went with him, I remember. Yeah, that day, yeah. And I you remember. guys left me in So there was three journeys in total. It's a disaster, man. It was hot. It was Ramadan. It was steamy. It was humid. It was summer. It was, it was bad. I think they, they tried at their level best to comfort us. We even went to what the you know the national mosque Imam Sheikh Ubaidul Haq, his oh. house, and he was telling his ah, wife Ashuk, Ashuk and Ashuk. Ashuk. Okay, so <laughs> such a nice guy, such a kind person, yeah, man. Was <coughs> a legend of Bangladesh. He was the Imam al Khatib of Baitul Mukarram, right? Yeah. The key like 
national mosque in Bangladesh and he was a person of authority. He was like an imam. And he was from our kind of ends as well. From he, was, I think he was related to us yeah. and he's from Baraka Kuri, like yeah. uh, uh, part of Zoki Bond. But he was a person, an imam as he should be, of yeah. authority, fearlessness, courage, of leadership, of command, you know, of, of leadership basically. Yeah. He represented all of his amazing qualities. So yeah, we, they tried to look after us, comfort us, you know, reassure us. But now we're in Silla and you guys went on one of these days, I can remember Ramadan day, you left me alone in the dormitory and in you guys <coughs> went for a morning bus trip and came back by the evening with the passports on the condition that Mama keeps uncle, that passport. Sheikh Abdul Qahid. Until Dad comes, he keeps comes. it with him. So now Abdul Qahid now, poor lad, he's scared because there's two of us. Two of us one chasing of them, and him he's around. Our passports. And he's also in the same <coughs> bus as us from Silat Town to the village. He's in a massive predicament, like your mom's on how his to case. protect Dad's himself. In his case. He has to protect himself. We're also on his case. So he's like taking all that heat, managing that pressure. And even now he has to manage a lot of pressure. But nonetheless, that happens. And guess what? We go eventually. This is like must be around in the middle of Ramadan or like a few days into Ramadan. And we want to now book a ticket back. So no, we need to now somehow get the passport off him because he wouldn't oh, yeah, give yeah, yeah. it. Remember, you ripped his T-shirt from the back because we would chase him. In the bond and you know in the land yeah. outside and in the, in the open fields we see it because it's quite a desperate situation man we need to get a passport to leave so i don't know how mom must have pleaded or something uh, and it was eventually agreed that the passports will be given back to us but the worst part was i think this is for me it wasn't given back to us it was we had we had to help ourselves at that time so there was a transfer that was going to happen okay okay well wow. between kahir mama and our one of the old uncles <clears throat> Abdurrahim Mama. So Abdurrahim Mama is gonna hold the passport. So because Mama had it for too long, and we're kind of pressuring him every day, every single waking hour, we're we're just on his case. Yeah. So he had to. He was getting tired, and he had to transfer it over to the older one. Yeah. And the plan was, it's like a proper, like a movie, you know. Yeah. Within that time, one of us just goes in and just snatches it and so runs. Kind of staged uh, <laughs> robbery. <laughs> <laughs> Of a personal property. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't really a robbery. <laughs> but eventually so we got the passport. Right? Eventually, so you made the move while the transfer was happening. And the transfer was kind of like done in an intentional way where we kind of see. And then you just went for it, grabbed it. We jumped in the light ace and we went to our buddy. Yeah, the car, yeah. And so like, that was in Nanabari. Yeah, that was in Mamur Khani, uh, the, the village home of our she or Nana Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar, Rahmatullahi Ali. So this was there. And then we took the passports back to our home now, which is dad's dominion now yeah. in Kazirbadi, in Kola Kuta, in Zogi Bond. Um, but then do you, know, do you know what the tragedy of the tragedies is? I can't remember. The passports. Oh, expired. yeah. So we went to book tickets. <coughs> so we, we, we got the passport. We handed it over to someone else yeah. who we thought would keep it safe. And she did. Tazbai's daughter. Okay, I don't remember this. Aisha, Aisha okay. So she okay. was there to kind of help us, uh, w help with our cooking and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, yeah, so, so just before, a few days before Eid, right, all, the, all of this started unfolding. We didn't even look at the passport until we went to the travel agent. And now the travel agent is not going to help us until he then speaks to mom. Yeah. Because he's not going to take the heat from dad because dad knows all of these matters. Yeah, yeah. So if, if he's caught, giving us a ticket, then he's done. So he needed reassurance from mom that he's able to, and he's allowed to give us a ticket. It's mad. Forget plot the twist. money. Money plot is twist later. Plot <coughs> twist, yeah. So what? Um, we went to Popular Travels and um, we said, we need tickets. And he said, okay, show us your passport and everything. And he's like, yeah, um, we have a problem. Um, these passports are out of date. And, and don't forget, this is a Bangladeshi passport and it's got this stamp of indefinite leave to remain uh, in the UK. So it, the situation is very sticky. So yeah, you, yeah. you have to make a passport that is attached to this passport. Then your stay in the your, UK is validated. Yeah. So they literally got two passports. You're going to stay for this. Yeah. Right? I can't remember. We have to wait in the queue to get this passport. So the guy made. said, look, um, not to worry. <laughs> Go and take some photos. And I remember those photos, man. Like they were depressed. Yeah, I was actually looking for that photo now. You don't want to see that. He's photo. mad. Like, we were, you were angry. And I was angry, sad. Angry. He was like this. It was a proper angry face because it was a disastrous situation. It was getting bad to worse. So we had to take those pictures. And then the guy said, look, come back with the photo. I'll make a few phone calls. And you, you just go to the passport office and just mention my name. Don't wait in the queue or anything. Just go to the window straight and they'll give you a package. 
and they did and it was oh, the good. new passport so it was kind of fast tracked because of his connections and everything and then we came back um, with the passport and now the guy is saying yeah we can't find the ticket because uh, it's eat time and all the flights are booked oh yeah so that was another problem so we we don't have a passport so first we don't have no passport we get the passport it's expired we renew the passport there's no tickets because and all this time he was saying don't worry about a ticket let's get the passport sorted and then we'll do the yeah. ticket and then um, he's saying, look, best thing, go back to your buddy village, stay a few days and don't forget dad's coming, uh, incoming or arrival is getting closer yeah, and closer. Yeah. Very, we're, we're kind, very thin, uh, thin by now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, about a week or so left before, before dad oh, well, arrives. Well, I said in love because dad was, if he comes then we're basically, we're, basically, oh, we're, we're stuck. Like we're back to square one. Yeah, yeah. And all of this is happening without dad's knowledge now because he doesn't know the trans- no, passport us, has man. been, has no, been, the passport has been compromised. <laughs> And um, we're doing this, all of this in, in the background. And um, so the guy said, look, um, I'm looking for the ticket and everything. And then he did call a few, I think one day or a couple of nights before Eden and said, I found your ticket. I've booked it, but I need the money before you guys leave because I don't trust you lot. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are going to ever pay me. So you, he said, I can't remember. I was, I never literally, he said, either you're one of your family members pays and nobody, no family members want to kind of take part in this such a kind of, Critical, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I done? I've made a phone call to my friend Naz, Anwar, and Abdul Rob. Oh my I God! Say, I saw yeah, them all the other day. Yo, yeah. yo, mandems, you know, you need to crowdfund <laughs> me some <laughs> ticket, <laughs> ticket money, and mine as well. I'm to pay back for that ticket. You know? <laughs> I still owe you money for that. I think ticket. it was sixteen hundred pounds or something direct flight because there was that was the only thing 1600 that sixteen hundred pounds yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a one way flight. I think eight hundred pounds. Two thousand five. Yeah, yeah. So Six. it was Eid Eid season. Eight hundred pounds. I don't know. I think uh, I think it was probably each eight hundred yeah. pounds. Probably. But we, the guy had no choice. As long as soon as he found it space, and he was you know the class differences, yeah. and he was one of the higher class tickets. Okay, okay, okay. So it wasn't a business class, but it was an expensive yeah, ticket. Premium economy. Pre- yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, he booked it, and he said, "Look, um, come on the day of Eid, but oh, you need God. to make sure I receive cleared funds." before Eid and all the banks shut in Eid time in Bangladesh. So how do we get the money to him? Because if they send it from the UK, it's going to take a few days. Oh, wow. So he said, look, I have so one this idea. this is the side of the problem that I don't know about because I'm a kid. Like, okay, yeah. you are managing all of this. <laughs> so he said, my brother lives in Forest Gate. If my brother calls, says that he's received the money, cash, from your friends, yeah. then I'll release the tickets to you. Oh, wow. And then my friends, they crowdfunded, you know, uh, Fatima Afa and everybody got together. Big they, shout out. Big shout guys, out, man. man. Um, they got Abdurrab the money. Abdul Rabbi, mm-hmm. Naznul Bai, Anwar Bai, and everyone else. Ad- yeah. Abdul Rabbi's sister, right? Fatima. Ah, Fatima. You know, we need legends, to meet, meet up. And we need legends. to meet up and, you know, legends. reconnect with these people. Yeah, they're amazing <coughs> people. So they, they um, Abdul Rob, I think it was Naz, went, went down and paid the money. Obviously, they, they got the confirmation. They've received the funds. Now it's the time to collect the tickets. It was day before. I think on the day of Eid, we're supposed to fly out. That's the day the plane's going to depart. Yeah. And at that time, I think was um, I think army was controlling the country as well. So it was it was very mm-hmm. strict. Mm-hmm. Like not you you had to do everything by the books. Yeah. You know you can't just turn up late and you know just cut yeah, cut the yeah, queue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so on the day of Eid, we do our Eid salah and everything in body, and we make our move. With the lights, I remember our driver. With, with, the, with our tajir tajir tajir, 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 tajir us. And you remember the other tragedy. The other tragedy is the guy there was, was two tragedies on the way to to the airport. Someone, what happened? I don't know the first one, but the second one, I know that, that the guy with the ticket, we can't find him. That was the third one. So first one, the, t- the, 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 the police pulls us over in Bangladesh on the way to Silet, like show us the paperwork. Obviously, the, our driver, he was legit and everything. The car was legit. He said, look, everything, here you go. We've got foreign, uh, foreren travelers here. Oh, we wow. need to move. And so within a few minutes, we were gone. Saddle. And then I think after Surkhay or somewhere, the tire blew up. Like one after another, oh we get out of the car quickly, oh you know, put the God. car on, on the jack, the jack yeah. do the tire change, and then we're on our way again. As we are getting into Silet, like we're calling the guy, he's not even answering the phone. Like on the, Eid day, he said, left. look, make sure you come before 10 or something a.m. Yeah. because I'm going to do my Eid Salah and I'm going to go to my village. village. Yeah. The guy doesn't Obviously answer the phone. Late. Yeah. And... Um, on th- as we enter, you know, that double bridge uh, bit in, in Silet, just before that, we see the guy's car going the opposite way. So, so yo, hold on, hold on. wait. He's basically leaving. Yeah. So basically, we're not going to London today at this rate because no. the tickets are not there. No. 
But by mere fortune, we just we, spot him we on the road. to see him going in the opposite direction, <laughs> exiting Silly while we're entering. Yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so we turn the car around, we follow him, and then we said, Look, we're calling you. Like, you know, why are you not answering the phone? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was just busy. I was going to call you anyway. But I've left the tickets with my son. Here's my basha, here's the address. Go and pick it up and make sure you, you get to the airport on time. Do not delay. Oh Don't waste God. your time. Just go straight to the airport, whatever happens. Oh my goodness so we. we Alhamdulillah, we collect the ticket. I think it was a three o'clock flight or something so that goes times. from Silet to Dhaka and then from Dhaka onwards to, to London. <clears throat> the funny thing is, is the next, very next day is when mum is also coming back to Bangladesh. Well, essentially, basically, from what I recall, we, we boarded a flight on Eid Day and yeah. they gave us like a little fitting as a treat yeah. for the Eid yeah. Day. And that same Biman Bangladesh Airlines flight landed in London. And it was returning, and on that return flight is mum. Is mum. So we we were we were due to meet mum at the airport just to kind of reunite and and see the say say goodbye to them. Anyway, so we get to the just before we get to the airport, we went to this hotel or restaurant and we had a munch, you know, just before we kind of do, say kiss goodbye to mama and everything. And um, yeah, we ate, we had a munch, and that was it. You know, we went into the airport. Ajit, man. Done, Going back done. to the point about the charity, I can remember while that passport was causing the problem, we were like so desperate, giving any charity. I think we had like two tuckers and you know five we tuckers, whatever we had. We we're just like giving. just giving, giving, giving. Because Allah, please like help so us. Desperate. Allah, please oh. help us. And Allah did. So when I'm like all of that happened, and we still managed to, and we we we, in. we managed to squeeze squeeze in. So. We get to Dhaka and then I start falling ill. Like I start feeling oh this God. heavy temperature. Like I'm sweating. I'm like, I'm not feeling well at all. But I just need to get out of that place. I can't make, uh, show them that I'm ill because they won't let me board the flight. And then I'm stuck yet again. Oh <coughs> Remember we met this brother from Brick Lane who was in our hotel room in, in Dhaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't so so we met, we met a few people and then, um, yeah, we boarded the flight that I could remember the AC and everything in Biman, the DC 10, it was full blast and I'm shivering, you know, yeah, I'm you continuously really Ill. ill. And Alhamdulillah, the flight took off. Um, I think all went smooth. We arrived in London and yes, we did meet mum, um, in London, uh, in Heathrow airport and they were boarding that same plane on the way back. And I think Naz and, um, Anwar. He came with his red polo to to pick us both I up from that, yeah. from Heathrow I Airport, that. Crazy, and um, our uh, so we were supposed to not go home because Dad would finish yeah. us. Dad is still here in London, and he's gonna go after a week because he's got some other unfinished business. So we went to the Khala's house in Roman Road. Remember again, it's a Fatima. Yeah, Khala, right. Yeah, yeah. So Fatima Afa from. All the Fatimas are yeah, helping Yeah, mom, Fatima, uh, Fatima Afa from Allah. Colchester, exactly. Fatima Khala from Roman Road. So we stayed in her house for a few days. And I remember I was sweating so much during the night, I would literally flood the whole bed. Yeah, yeah. And it was, and she used yeah, to complain. She had like an illness, typhoid or something. So, yeah, after a few weeks, I kept on going for blood tests in, in hospital. And, you know, trying to like, being ill and trying to drive at the same time, it was hard. And you went straight to Madrasa. Like, you had no other kind of... Yeah. Um, stop is stoppage in between because that by sorted out Bolton for you at that time. Was it Barry or Bolton? Um, I don't know if it was immediately, but what I do within within few weeks you yeah, were you were gone. I was gone, yeah. And that that was the reassurance to dad, like that we're gonna behave ourselves. We're gonna behave, but yeah, dad found out while we were going right, and then he was like telling, tell them to stop, tell them to stop, and then by then we were gone. Oh yeah, the, the, you missed one part when. <coughs> We went missing in Bangladesh. Yeah, and yeah. Dad doesn't know where we are. Yeah, we he were declared call, missing. Yeah, he called even the airports to say, "Watch out for these guys." Yeah, yeah. And he told all of our relatives in the UK, "If you see them, you know, shoot at sight." No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Report well, at sight. Stop them. Stop them. Yeah, but no one saw us. The only one guy that saw us, you know who, right? When I was taking to the ho taking you to the hospital, we said salam to one of our relatives, and he went home and told his mom. Who was it? I can't name him. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. You you were kind of trying to be smart. You even went to home, like to do what? Like to meet someone. I don't know what. I don't and then you took my phone and you, you left was it at home. Me? Yes. I thought that was you. No. Why would I go home and leave my phone? You took my phone and he left it there. And then dad found that phone and he started calling my I friends. You went home. No. With your phone left the phone. No, I didn't. What did I take your phone with you? I don't know. Whatever. Maybe to, to stay in touch, to stay in communication. Mm. Anyway, we, you were gone, so you were kind of safe, like in a madrasa. Like dad would have been happy that yeah. you got readmitted to a madrasa, and my I was the guy stuck. 
So I went to Tablik, I went to Jamaat, you know, trying to, <laughs> uh, trying to kind redeem of yourself. Re redeem myself. I grew a long beard and obviously daddy. And then I think the final part was we kind of got, we lobbied daddy. So we said to daddy, please help us. Like, you know, because dad would only listen to his kind of mom. And if she, even if she was wrong, he would still listen because yeah, that's his mom. mom. And daddy kind of intervened and intercepted and said, look, don't alone. do leave anything to them. Leave alone. my gr grandchildren alone. Let them be. And, you know, that's, that's an order. Yeah. And that was it. And then, um, yeah, um, I went to hospital. Um, I'd done blood tests. And then they and kept on sending me better. back. They kept on sending me back. And then one day they said, no, you need to come back. And that's when they admitted to hospital. And mm. they started giving me all these strong medications through my blood, oh uh, my th through my but veins. You were better eventually, though. Eventually, I'm after two weeks of continuous you know, medications and antibiotics because there was a virus in my blood or something. Mm -hmm. It was called salmonella that I developed and most likely it was from chicken or something. And I think it might have been that chicken from that restaurant or body. I don't know. Oh my God, and terrible, since man. then, I, I, know, I, I, I don't eat chicken in Bangladesh. You know, even if it looks well cooked, I try to go for fish options. But wow. yeah, um, that, I, I kind of became better. I went to then instead of going and then dad was being caring, you know, like he, he, he said, come home, you know, stay at home because I was in hospital. I was hospitalized and, you know, I was sent back to Curry House at that time. And obviously it was just me and dad at that time. Everyone's gone Bangladesh and it was boring. Like, oh, my God, like, what do I do? What do I do? I need an escape. I need an escape from Curry House and dad. Um, not dad, but like I just. Yeah, uh, there's nothing to do. There's tension already yeah, there. Yeah. You just want to get yeah, out. Yeah, I just want to be like, uh, live a normal life. And and, and um, I remember, I, it sounds so bad, man. I, I call one of my friends and say, yo, we need to f pretend like a doctor. In it. <laughs> okay, okay, let's stop. <laughs> so no, anyway, he, 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 time as well, yeah. so so he helped me, he helped me kind yeah. of uh, go to Afa's house. Yeah. And that's where dad kind of eventually came back from Bangladesh. And he saw me with a long beard and he was... Okay. He's happy. And then he said, look, the best thing for this guy <laughs> is to put him to work. Okay. So he found me my first job in a money transfer uh, in Cannon Street Road. And oh, yeah, wow, that was my first job. He, he, so he kind of uh, placed me in a job and, and that was it. Happily. Change of career. Happily ever after. So wow. yeah, that was it. That and was so a journey, of, journey of a lifetime. And That's amazing, man. I think he had <coughs> a huge, I mean, to be honest, like, had it not been for that journey, then for me as well, obviously your your situation unfolded in a different way. For me now, I went to Bolton Madrasa, I went back to Ibrahim College, then from Ibrahim College I went to Egypt. And that's what really like made a big difference to my life from Ibrahim College to um, Egypt, Cairo, al Azhar University and all of that. Uh, and that's what really helped me and, and brought me to to whatever the, the service that I'm doing now. So Alhamdulillah, I think eventually, uh, you know, Allah's plans are Allah. greater and Allah's plans are better. Uh, may Allah forgive us for our shortcomings and our uh, mistakes that we have made, uh, especially with regards to our dad, Asmatullah Alayhi. Uh, but it was a situation of desperation. <laughs> and this podcast is not is in no way, shape or form to encourage you <laughs> to, to, to disobey. Be, or it's, it's rather we're sharing a personal experience in which we believe that we were really, uh, we were really desperate and we had no choice. Uh, as you can see, uh, um, uh, Shurubai even ha had suffered from Salmonella, and so it was a desperate situation. And and what that means, Islamically, Sharia-wise, Sharia is a separate discussion to have, but it was one of those really powerful stories of our childhood, of our younger days, and I think we want to talk about it. So I uh, think it definitely demonstrated, from a business point of view, I think the, the leadership and, you know, being able to just... just work under pressure and I think that's something that I have applied well, that's, you know, that's later, cool. down, I mean, later I, down we there. never had time to talk about anything else but <coughs> I, I, one of the things that I obviously and always in fact look up to you for is your ability to uh, work under pressure like this is this is your fault forte this is what you're really good at you know despite all of the struggles that you go through uh, all of the multiple challenges that you face you are able to maintain a cool and calm head and and do what you need to do so you know, big up to Jazak you for that. Allah, man, man, it's big stuff, man. I, I, that's opposite of me. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I can't deal with pressure. I like my simple stuff. One at a time. Uh, <laughs> one thing at a time. I'll do your mom job and I'll do this. I, you know, I, I don't like too many things at the same time. But you guys, on the other hand, you and Abid as well. Mom. Yeah, you can't. You guys are very apt when it comes to dealing with multiple things. And especially you, like, 
you know, even if you we don't have much time now, but if you recall the early days of Sunda Mosque and, and the difficulties in finances and all the different projects that you're running, you know, uh, the ability to remain cool headed and calm and and and, and co in, in control um, of your emotions, of your judgment, was and the commitment. These are things that you exhibited, and obviously it was it was a huge part of Sunda Mosque's journey and. If you look at, for example, the Whitechapel market stores, how you were resilient even in the days of cold and snow. I was there for a portion of the time, but then I went to Egypt as well. Um, so you carried on. And big shout out to you for that. And I just want to say as well, because time is really short. Yep, go yep. <coughs> big um, shout out to you for this KSR as well. Uh, this the side by side with KSR, sorry. And I know, I know sometimes I make fun of you in privacy, but I have a lot of respect because you're doing all of this while you're going through everything else in life. And there's a lot going on in your life. And I really make dua to Allah in this blessed hour just before Amen. Jumu'ah now that Allah makes all of your matters easy Amen. and give you success in this podcast and gives us all protection and success and, and, and well-being in this dunya and akhirah and guides us always to that which is better and guides us on the right path and, uh, and, and takes us from success to success and protects us from all, every single harm from every direction. Amen. 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 I mean, there's so much more to talk about, but the time is... Inshallah, we'll have to do, do, do another, another, another episode, maybe maybe further down the year or maybe Perhaps, next year, inshallah. inshallah. No worries. No worries. Inshallah. I, I look forward to watching how this came out. <laughs> inshallah. I, yeah. think, I think it will be good. I think it will be a very, very interesting watch because interesting, sometimes yeah. when you're talking, you don't really hear what you're saying yeah. and, and it's always interesting to also watch yeah, yeah. again. Uh, yeah. It's, it's amazing. I mean, today I think we unraveled some of the most unknown parts of our yeah. personal biography and history yeah. which is very intriguing to us but i don't know how people will find it but yeah, it's, there's so much more still untold uh you know from the difficulties of <laughs> the uk and you know the allah akbar alhamdulillah alhamdulillah for all of the blessings of allah alhamdulillah jazakallah khairan sheikh ashik for for spending this last uh, an hour and 15 minutes with us yeah. and we really look forward to seeing you once again Thank very you so much, soon jazakallah uh, for having me and you know uh, you're an inspiration to our whole family and you're a rock in our whole family you're a very strong person and you're very committed and uh, i'm very honored to be with you in your podcast thank you for having me Zakla. Zakla. Zakla.